Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to another patch note show. It's 4.13. And we're actually stretching mid-season over three patches this year. This is why we're happy to kick off Project Olympus. Starting with 4.13 and leading all the way up to the start of Season 5, Project Olympus will be focusing on a number of big changes that Smite fans have wanted for a long time. Artio, the Celtic Guardian. Artio is really unique because she's going to be a true stance switcher, changing between her druid form and her bear form. We haven't had a true stance switcher in Smite in a long time, and we're really excited to see how she does in the current meta. As a druid, you'll see that she has a little bit more energy-focused abilities around some healing and some buffing and debuffing. Um, whereas in her bear form, she's going to be a little bit more violent and aggressive. Um, she's going to be able to engage, and she's going to have a little bit higher damage on her similar abilities. Hey everyone, in order to keep this quick, I'm going to run down the rest of the changes, then change back to the show for some of the explanations. Global audio now plays for map objectives. Jungle minions in general have received decreased XP rewards, with the exception of mid harpies, and health of the towers and phoenixes have received a general buff in health. Siege received a balance and visual pass, and spooling in Clash and Joust have been decreased. Also, a new triumphant chest system allows for in-game chest progression. Lots of balance, of course, for mid-season. I will go over some of the simpler changes. Al Kuang now receives more mana per level and gains stacks towards lifesteal and power for executions. Bakasura gained buffs with his eating and regurgitate. Bologna got slightly nerfed in power and cooldown. Chiron now provides a mark to all hit by his AoE. Kronos received a new passive that provides power stacks over time. Isis never loses her passive stacks. Kuzimbo got generally buffed. Niza's interaction with beads has been fixed, hopefully. Nuwa can now select targets for her soldiers. Sobek has a longer duration for his protections. Susano has an old Heartseeker-like passive while receiving nerf to damage and scaling, and Uller received reduced mana cost and cooldowns. On to the huge gauntlet of items and relics. Many of the relic changes seem to be putting more emphasis on upgrading your relics rather than just having a straight up cooldown reduction. Aegis no longer cleanses. Blink has a shorter cooldown originally, then a longer cooldown upgraded, but it has a reduced damage buff for 2 seconds. Bracer of Undoing undoes more but doesn't affect abilities in base form and its upgraded form has higher cooldown. Cursed got overall nerfed but gained an ability to increase other players mana cost and cooldowns. Sprint now has increased cooldowns when upgraded as well as Horrific Emblem, however those affected by Emblem deal less damage. Shell now provides an actual shield with its upgraded blocking two basic attacks. Met now affects mana costs and cooldowns instead of the regenerates. Phantom Bell lost its extra effects but gained damage reduction in its upgraded form, as well as higher cooldown. Increased cooldowns to upgraded thorns, however it now steals a little bit of lifesteal. Sunder now deals 15% of the target's health but does not debuff their defense in base form. And finally, for the relics, the base form teleport can no longer teleport towards. Now, for actual items, Rangda's mask now has lower maximum stacks. Frostbound Hammer has a nerf specifically for ranged gods. Boomba's mask got nerfed. Binnycroft's Talon got nerfed. Dynasty Plate Helm got nerfed, while Celestial Legion Helm now gains protections as long as you don't take physical damage from gods. Vampiric Shroud lost its lifesteal for more protections in a flat health and mana gain per target hit. Ancient Blade, Winged Blade, and Adventurer's Blade lost some attack speed while Curse Blade and Vitalis were removed. Relic Dagger traded attack speed for health and relic cooldown reduction. Demonic Grip and Telekin's Ring lost some attack speed. The former gained power and movement speed, while the latter stacks up to 60 power, which is lost after 5 seconds. Enchanted Ring and Emerald Ring reduced in cost and traded attack speed for movement speed. Druid Stone has more protections instead of power. Word Stone decreased in cost and power, while Void Stone followed suit. Both, however, gained small health stats. Kinji's Guard and Oni's Hunter's Guard received buffs to MP5, health, and their passives. Instead of 
the, the item, Hasten Fatalist, is actually dead and gone. Right. But it's going to be replaced by a couple new items. Okay. We're going to have the Hasten's Katana, which is going to be a more powerful version, only available to melee physical characters, assassins and warriors. And we're also going to have the Hasten's Ring, which is going to be added to the Ring Tree only for mages, so the mage ADC is going to use that. And it's going to have a time limited on an internal cooldown haste. Um, We'll, we'll get Fatalis effect, which we're now calling haste, by the way. Haste. It's going to be haste, no longer Fatalis. Right, okay. so we have the haste effect on both of these items, but only available to mages and assassins. And then we'll have a third item that will be given to hunters that gives them a stacking movement speed, but not as strong as the actual reduction of movement penalty. Toxic Blade is going to be 2200 gold. It's going to be 100 health, 10 movement speed, 20% attack speed, 10 penetration, and enemies hit by your basic attacks gain a stack of 20% reduced healing, stacking up to three times, and stacks last for five seconds. So it is a potential viable item for a hunter to be looking at picking up as an anti-heal item other than brawlers. Yes, definitely. Much better for them, for them than brawlers. Okay, built of an enchanted ring is going to be 2200 gold, 60 magical power, 10% movement speed, and the passive, dealing 100 damage to enemy gods gives you a stack. At 50 stacks, Shaman's Ring evolves, gaining a new passive that allows the wearer to deal an additional 10% damage to targets hit by the wearer's abilities. Yeah, so this is a... This is the end game now. Right, so... It's very loud, but I can hear it. Yeah, the end game audio is quite loud. So we mentioned this earlier on about which blade changes, because AJ was already here to right. talk about that. So this is now going to build off of the Adventurer's Blade. It's going to cost 2,050 gold. Mm -hmm. We've decreased the health on this from 200 to 100. The increased attack speed from 15% to 20%. We've added 15% lifesteal, magical or physical on this, by the way. Right. And the aura enemies within 55 units have their attack speed reduced by 20%. We've removed the passive that stacks healing reduction debuff onto the new item. Recently. Right, so you're going to see some change stats here to make this item a little more effective to, towards characters that actually want a basic attack. Okay. So this is a really good, strong counter item. If you're a warrior wanting to counter an enemy hunter or another warrior that needs to rely on basic attacks, or even a hunter versus hunter, you could really use this in a very lot of interesting ways. Uh, next to this is going to be Nemesis. A couple of rebalancing ideas around this now. Mm -hmm. Swift Vengeance increased the scaling from 50% to 60%. 25 per hit to 30% per hit. Yeah, that's the double dash. Yes, on the double dash there. Slice and dice increased base damage from 80 to 280. It's now going to be 100 to 340 at the top end. However, we've increased the scaling from 50 to 60% as well, but we've reduced the slow from 30 scaling up to 50. It's going to be 30 flat. So it's a damage increase, but a, a CC and control D decrease. Correct. Okay. And then on top of that, Divine Judgment, decreased protection shred from 50% to 30%. Right. So you're going to see the, oh, nemesis. the ultimate protection shred go down a good bit. This is really that Nemesis has become super prioritized lately. Okay. Um, she is really, really good at just absolutely removing somebody from the fight. We wanted her to have more consistent power, not just an absolute extreme uncounterable burst of it. Raijin. Oh, yeah. Is he alive? He is soon going to be. I call this more of a heavy rebalancing, a lot like we did with Hades, Hell, things like that. He's getting a new passive that's going to give him bonus cooldown reduction as opposed to more burst damage. Quickly read out some of the stuff. The passive, for every five abilities cast, Raijin reduces the cooldown of all abilities currently on cooldown, including the one just cast, by one second. Right. And on top of that, Percussive Storm, which is the one, I believe. Mm -hmm. What we've done with this, we've adjusted the first two shots to so now travel down the center of the targeter and adjusted the last two shots to be closer to the center of the targeter. We've increased the ra shot radius from 3 to 4.5, and we've also increased the range from 65 to 70. On top of that, it's also going to have a damage increase. It used to be 25 to 85 per shot. It's now going to be 35 to 95 per shot. And decrease the scaling from 30% to 25% per shot. And decrease the cost from 80 to 100. It's now going to be 50 to 70. A lot of changes. And then Raiju now deals its damage over time. Maybe we shouldn't even read all of them. There's so I'm many. die. Yeah. Raiju, do, I'll, I'll, I'll speed read it. Or guys. you can skip the numbers and just say the increase decrease, maybe. All right, cool. Increase the damage on Raiju's from, from a flat 60. It's going to be a now a, a dot damage, I guess, is the best way to Right, it. and this was part of that, that burst. So now you can see these, these... Ooh. Yeah, they're all dotted. So it takes a little bit longer for Raiju to get that damage off. And we reduced the scaling from a flat 70% to 13% every 0.5 seconds. Now applies a 15% slow to the mark target as well, targets as well right. with Raiju. More utility. So it's got a little bit more utility in this, and the cooldowns come down quite a bit as well on this. Obviously, you'll see this in the full patch, and I was too apologies for this. Uh, Thundercrash is now targetable until he fades away to his new uh, location. And finally, the ultimate, the Taiko drums, we've improved the sound. 
Oh, interesting. So it's different. The drums are a bit like clearer yeah. for the drum beats. Okay. And the visual effects is the, the biggest difference. Well, the projectile speed has reduced, been reduced from 120 to 100 per second. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's move a little slower. A little bit slower. A little harder to hit. Increase the fire duration from 4.5 seconds to 7 seconds. You can say in that ultimate for 7 seconds. A lot longer. And we've reduced the damage on beat 2, the taunt, and the 3, the fear from 50% to 30%. So the taunt and the fear are going to do less Much damage to the ball control. Right. A little new features going on here. One thing is that Summer of Smite will have a bunch of new, also, like the Egyptian event, free-to-do quests that'll give you smaller rewards, bonuses. You'll need to do those quests and buy the skins to choose which bonus item you want. So no puzzles like that event, okay. but you buy a skin, you do a quest, and you get to choose which of the bonus items you want. You don't have to get them in order, like old Summers of Smite. And if you buy all the skins, you'll be able to get the rare final skin. That's the quick story of Season 4's mid-season patch. The full patch notes are in the description if you want the full specifics. Also, on a channel specific note, this may or may not be my last patch notes, depending on how well this video specifically goes. Anyways, be sure to leave a like if this was helpful, and thanks for watching.